November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. In this ground school video, I'm still covering instrument mastery and the gyroscopic instruments. This one is all about turn indicators. Turn indicators will tell you about the quality of your turn. Now, what do I mean by quality? Well, a good turn will result in the force vectors pointing down through your body, not inside or outside. You want your passengers and cargo to be pushed into their seats and not to the inside or outside most of the time. A good turn is one where the tail follows the nose around the turn, and the turn indicator will tell you if that's the case. There are two types of turn indicators, the turn and slip indicator and the turn coordinator. The turn and slip indicator isn't quite as useful, but there are a lot of them out there still, and so I'm going to cover that one first. The turn and slip indicator looks like this on the face. It's got a gyro inside with the axis aligned with the lateral axis of the plane. And uh, when you bank the airplane, the gyro stays upright and the needle on the front deflects from side to side to indicate your rate of turn. A single uh, gimbal axis limits the gyro to rolling motion only, and then there's a spring in the middle that returns it to center once the turn is stopped. The markings on the face indicate a standard rate turn uh, when the little needles align with them. A standard rate turn is three degrees per second. A standard rate turn is three degrees per second. A standard rate turn is three degrees per second. That means it takes two minutes to go all the way around in a full 360. It takes two minutes to turn all the way around. I don't repeat things that are immensely important. If a standard rate turn is three degrees per second, then a half standard rate is 1.5 and double is six. You're going to be asked this on a test, how much time does it take to turn a certain number of degrees at standard rates or half standard rates? So, how long does it take to turn 180 degrees at standard rate, long pause? 180 over three is 60, so it's 60 seconds. What about a 45 degree turn? 15 seconds. And at half rate? 30 seconds. Okay, not hard to do the math, but you must know that a standard rate turn is two minutes all the way around. In fact, you might see the words two minutes on the face of the instrument. Now, how do you know if your tail is exactly following your nose and that the people are pushed into their seat bottoms? You look at the little inclinometer that's at the bottom of the instrument. It's used to detect yaw, which is what you control with the rudder. It's a little ball inside a liquid-filled tube, and it reads like a level, but it senses fake level in the airplane. If the ball's position uh, is primarily controlled with the rudder, although bank has an effect too, uh, but the idea, of course, is to keep the ball centered during all flight conditions. I'll cover exceptions in that video on intentional slips and things. But the thing to remember is to step on the ball. Step on the ball. Step on the ball. If the ball moves to the right, you push the right pedal. If it moves to the left, you step on the left pedal. Simple. Coordinated flight is safe flight. You can bet that you're not going to enter a spin if you're in coordinated flight. Unless you're intentionally slipping the plane, try to keep the ball centered by stepping on the ball. So what are you going to do when the ball's not centered? Well, you're either slipping or skidding. If you think of it kind of like you're driving down the road, this might make sense a little bit better. If you try to make a hard turn, you're going to be thrown to the outside of the turn, right? And you might skid off the road. The ball behaves the same way. It's thrown to the outside of the turn when you skid around a turn. So you either add rudder or you increase your bank angle so that you turn faster to fix the problem. We think of it kind of like a, a racetrack, I suppose. The corners are banked, right? Because they're going really fast. That increased bank keeps them from skidding into the walls and off the track. Faster cars need more bank. So if skidding is when the ball is thrown to the outside of the turn, then slipping must be when the ball is thrown to the inside of the turn. When you lower your wing, the airplane will slip in that direction. Your lift vector is now pointing in the direction of this turn, and it has to slip that way. Maybe think of it like uh, the wings becoming like a tilted, makes it slice through the air kind of like a knife. So to maintain coordinated flight, you'll either reduce your angle of bank, 
or increase your rudder on the inside of the turn? That'll probably be a test question. Let's do a couple of examples. Here's straight coordinated flight. Here is a left turn coordinated. Here is a left skid. Here's a right skid. Here's a right slip. And the last one would be a left slip. And that's four balls, inside or outside. That's how you walk a plane. So to correct these skids and slips, you can either step on the ball or you can change your bank angle. You may have to do both depending on the situation or maybe just one of them. During instrument flight, we really like to use standard rate turns. So if your turn is already showing a standard rate, then changing your bank angle is not really an option and you'll have to use the rudder. Okay. So that's how you read a turn and slip indicator and what to do to return to coordinated flight. Now, let's talk about the turn coordinator. It operates basically the same, but the test will want you to know that the gyro inside is mounted slightly canted so that it also indicates roll rate. This instrument can be used to determine your relative bank and should your attitude indicator fail, your turn coordinator is electrically driven and it'll provide a nice backup in case your vacuum system fails. A turn coordinator has a little plane symbol instead of the needle, and there are horizontal marks that align with the wings that you can use to tell when you're not turning. There are also marks that you use to align your wings with to indicate when you're at a standard rate turn. The turn coordinator does not read your bank angle, only a rate of turn, so don't confuse the two. If you bank more steeply, then the little airplane follows but its position is only related to the rate of your turn. It's quite nice though that it shows you which way you're banked and turning. If the wings are level and your compass isn't spinning, then you can be certain that you're flying straight. It's worth noting though that the turn, or it's worth reiterating rather, that the turn coordinator indicates roll rate in addition to the turn rate. That will be a test question. You'll want to keep the ball centered and step on the ball to center it. If the centrifugal force is greater than the inward lift vector that's turning you, then the ball is thrown to the outside of the turn and you skid around the corner, just like in a car. If the inward lift vector is greater than the centrifugal force vector throwing you to the outside, then you're slipping and you need to step on the ball or change your bank angle to recenter the ball. In an emergency with a failed vacuum system, you'll use the turn coordinator to sense whether you're turning or not, and of course, maintain coordinated flight. I hope this video helps you understand that how these instruments work and how to use them in the real world, not just on a test. We're nearly done with the Instrument Mastery series for the basic six pack of instruments. There's one more gyroscopic instrument to go, so go ahead and subscribe. It's free, and you'll be notified when that video is out too. And stay with me on 121.mic.